Good day to everyone, and I hope everyone is doing very well. Uh, we're managing through these times. Today's topic will be travel away with books. Isn't it the time of the year where we're all planning our international trips, our cruises, our getaways? Well, if we can't do that this year, let's keep in mind that books can be a passport uh, to the world. We'll do some virtual traveling around. We'll use our imagination. And I'm going to stress books where place and geography uh, seem to be a main character of the book. I'm sure you've read books like that, and I've brought just a few here to mention to you. You know, books have saved so many people during these times. I know so many people who have a new love of cookbooks. It's like a family hobby now with cooking. We have a wonderful section here in the library on cookbooks. And you know, I think most Americans have gained at least a half a pound each month during these times. So let's do away with the cookbooks. First, I'd like to give you a little quiz and I'll give you the answer at the end. Perhaps you could tell me what you think or think about the countries that are the most internationally traveled and also the nations that are the least traveled. So we'll talk about that at the end. So where shall we go? One of my favorite titles is How Stella Got Her Groove Back. Remember that good old book uh, written by Terry McMillan, a wonderful African-American uh, writer? I think they made a movie of it. And why do I think, was it Whoopi Goldberg that starred in that? Um, or how about if we go along with Marco Polo? on his world travels. Probably some of them, uh, his writings might be a little fantastic, but again, that's why we have imaginations. We own um, The Travels of Marco Polo. I think you might enjoy that. Do you need more inspiration? How about reading the book, A Thousand Places, to see before you die. Uh, look at the size of it. And a nice companion of that is a book we own called The World Heritage Sites. It's a beautiful book and it makes you realize what a beautiful world we do live in. Do you like maps? Uh, do you like gauging diff uh, distances? I could spend hours looking at maps. I've been cross country like three times, car trips, three or four now. And it's just heavenly to imagine where you might be going next. Have you ever read uh, Dava Sobel's book, Longitude? It's a wonderful, real nonfiction book about the discovery of longitude. Before then, getting into a ship could truly be uh, life challenging. Uh, or perhaps on a ship you would like to go along uh, on the epic polar adventure to Antarctica. This is a very famous book called Endurance. It's breathtaking the survival of the human spirit and its curiosity. Another true story along those lines by one of uh, my favorite writer, as well as other librarians here at the library, Nathaniel Philbrick's book, In the Heart of the Sea. Unbelievable story of survival. And the scariest part is it's true. They made a wonderful movie of this with a very romantic uh, uh, actor. 
and I particularly enjoyed the musical score to this. So read this and you can escape and travel in your mind. How about going to an imaginary land who doesn't like toll games and his imaginary world, the Middle Earth. Beautiful, beautiful story, great imagination. Uh, Tolkien is the best, is he not? How about another trip? One of my favorite um, uh, books here in the library is by the wonderful author Stephen Ambrose. And he and his family traveled in the footsteps of the Lewis and Clark um, expedition. The book is glorious. It's just beautiful. And it really brings alive what those days were like when America was still um, uh, so untraveled uh, by the new arrivals. Uh, how about now if we go to um, uh, the beauty and the uniqueness of some places. Some books just stand out for me. One of, another one of my favorite books, I have several, My Antonia. Uh, one of the best books I have ever read and it brings the days of the Nebraska Prairie alive. Antonia is a wonderful American character. Um, and along with that, so many books on um, Paris, fiction and nonfiction. I recently read this book, it's a series by um, Mark Pryor. This is called The Paris Librarian. Wonderful book, a lot about the libraries in Paris. How about a romance that takes place off the coast of um, France? Uh, international bestseller by Jeff, Jess Walter. Boy meets girl, what do you think might happen? We could go on and on for days, couldn't we? If you prefer something short, we have the wonderful magazine, the National Geographic. Just looking at the pictures of that is truly an education. And of course, the run-of-the-mill travel books, because we will survive this, maybe come the fall, uh, we can be more out and about than we are right now. I heard a news report the other day that Mexico and the Caribbean um, are leading in uh, travel plans right now. So we have wonderful travel guides to that. Uh, but isn't it the truth? There is no place like home. So when you come home from your travels uh, or planning your travels, how about this for a wonderful thought? Summer in Connecticut. And keep in mind that the uh, national parks and Connecticut Park uh, Service is one of the best in the country. So you don't have to go far, you can just get in your car. Also, our wonderful local area, the Last Green Valley, we have guidebooks here uh, at the library. And so many of the places are outdoors, wonderful family trips. So keep that in mind for your um, adventures between now and over the summer. Okay, so the um, answer to the quiz, the most popular locations for international travel, did you guess France first, Spain, that surprised me, then the United States, and then China. How about the least traveled? I have never heard of the, these two places. Tuvalu, I think is how it's said. It's a hundred tiny islands scattered in the South Pacific. And the other one is Kiribati, which are islands in Central Pacific.
So maybe you'd like to look them up on a global map and plan your trip. And remember, it's a beautiful world out there wherever you look. Travel with books. Take care now.